I mean, we're at the fag end of three days and uh, just post lunch, right? So just to kickstart the topic, first of all, I would love to acknowledge that there are three amazing leaders on stage and I am the gender that is least represented for once and I wanted to acknowledge that. Uh, yeah. Secondly, it's one of those bar stories, Unilever and Proctor walks into a bar talking about purpose and then Grab decides to join in. So again, I'm really thankful uh, to all three of them. Brief introductions. Sheryl is the founding CMO for Grab. I think nine year journey. One of the most fearless leaders that I know across the sphere of marketing and sustainability. So thank you so much, Cheryl, for doing this, knowing that I always get you into trouble every time we do so. Yeah. Priyali is the senior vice president at Procter & Gamble. She's also an executive sponsor for their DEI efforts. And like everybody else at Procter & Gamble, she takes extreme pride in business becoming a force of growth and a force of good. Right? And we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that. And Kim leads one of the most purposeful brands that I know in a company called Unilever, which spearheaded Unilever's living sustainable plan called Lifebuoy. Right? Every time they grow, they tend to save the world because of germs. And every time they save the world because of germs, they tend to grow. So Kim, thank you very much. You're another fearless leader who happens to be a woman that I know, so thank you so much for doing this. Just to set the context of purpose and why purpose is needed, and then we'll talk about uncertain times, I just thought I'd share four numbers. So 2073 is the year at which we are currently slated to reach the sustainable development goals. Not 2030, 2073. 91% of the world's plastic doesn't get recycled today. And for a father of two young girls, the amount of years it will take us to reach gender equality today is 132. So when we talk about purpose, and I've requested this for the panel, we don't talk about their wonderful two-minute advertising film, the little CSR program that they're running inside, the world needs big businesses to execute purposeful growth as best as it can. At the same time, I was reading this morning, $9 trillion of the world's economy has been lost over the last two months because of, I'm sure everybody's stock indicator shows red. Shipping costs have never been as high as they are now. We're, every day we're reading about inflation and recession, and how difficult will it be for these amazing leaders to unleash purpose in such uncertain times is the topic we'd like to discuss today. So to kick start, what is your personal purpose, Kim, and how does it align with that of Unilever? Hello. Okay. Um, so my personal purpose is to create challenging adventures for outsized outcomes. Uh, I'm a mom of two kids as well, and I think um, it's, it's probably coincidental, but also not that I'm in Lifebuoy, because Lifebuoy is a brand that's about preventing infections and helping parents ensure that their kids fall ill a little less often. And as a mom, that's what I want to do for more families around the world. Um, but with my purpose, what I do is that I actually find interesting ways you know, create new ways so that I can actually bring life boy purpose to a bigger impact to consumers around the world. And what about you, Priyali? What is your personal purpose and how does it connect with a force for growth and a force for good? So that's a big question, right? It's one of those motherhood questions. What is your personal purpose? I think that as I have uh, gotten older, let's face it, you know, both in my career and as well as a mom of a 14-year-old boy, a teen boy now, I've realized that I find joy and therefore purpose in growth. Growth, of course, of the business that goes without saying, but also growth of people. 
uh, growth of organizations. And that's the reason why a couple of years ago I put up my hand at PNG and said, you know what, I'll be, in addition to running the skin and personal care business, I'm happy to be the executive sponsor of equality and inclusion. Particularly, and you quoted something about this uh, for women, right? So I, I run the gender equality program at, at PNG. How that actually connects for me is that, you know, being one of the world's, if not the world's largest advertiser, we have, as Proctor, a lot of power, and with it comes responsibility in our advertising voice. We influence, we, we in many ways create culture. And how we use that to tell the story about the equality the world needs is a fantastic way to marry my personal purpose with what I do at work. Wow, impressive. And Ms. Go, what is your personal purpose and how does it connect? Okay, so I, I really hated this question because <laughs> <laughs> I hated this question because I, I think I've asked myself that question on a per personal purpose front for ages, almost for all my life. And I've always struggled because to a very large dis uh, degree, I don't really know. You know, I don't have children and... You know, I, 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 I care a lot about a lot of things, but if you tell me, if you ask me what is your, your absolute like, life purpose, I, I don't quite know, okay? But uh, I think there are some principles that I, I live by. Um, one is, you know, I think life is a gift, and every single day that you live, try to make the best of it. You know, try to be a kind person, try to be good. Um, so yeah, don't, I, I, you know, for a long time I always thought something was wrong because I could never figure out what that purpose is, but I think just moving forward in a positive way, at least for me, is good enough. Now I think when you, when I think about Grab, and, and you know, I, I've been with the company for nine years, I'm yeah, first marketer, and I, I joined right after they had a product because before that they, they didn't really need a marketer. And, and, and to a very large degree, it, it feels a lot like that. You know, when we started out, we only had one thing in mind, which was we, we started out in Malaysia, right? And all we wanted to do was make taxis safe and reliable. But over time, we realized that, hey, drivers actually um, also need a way to earn income. And they were struggling as well. And over time, we realized that our mission changed with with time, with how we understand Southeast Asia better, and it continued to evolve. So today we have a very broad mission statement. You know, we want to improve the lives of uh, Southeast Asians through economic empowerment, but to a large degree, we're also feeling our way and trying to figure out what's the best way to make that happen. And, um, you know, I guess to some degree, it's a bit like my life. <laughs> I can always trust you to be genuine, authentic, uh, in your responses, Cheryl, and, and, and I adore that uh, f on the record, okay? Uh, this battle, constant battle, because purpose is one of the most bastardized world in the marketing business, right? Uh, companies make a two-minute film and think, oh, look how we're doing our purpose. And some actually live and die by it, and the recent Patagonia news is, 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 uh, a wonderful testament to the only stakeholder being Earth. But within your own experiences, is there a constant battle between purpose and profit? Should there be a battle? Uh, and, and what are your thoughts? And, and I'll, I'll, I'll start uh, with you, Priyali, uh, in this constant purpose versus profit. So I absolutely don't think there's a battle. You know, and to your point, I think I'll pick up on something you said right up front in your question, Rupin, is that this word is often misused or misunderstood. It's one of those that, you know, it's one of those, again, motherhood words that you can use for anything, right? Um, just going back to our own history as PNG, 200 years ago or so, when we were founded, we were founded by a soap and a candle maker way back in the US, right? And one of the points of pride, and I just happened to be in Cincinnati a couple of weeks ago, so I took a picture of this, was our first advertisement, which actually said something to the effect of, you know, a bar of soap that is so pure it floats, and candles with tallow that, that are 99.9% .9 pure and give you the exact grammage that is advertised or, you know, declared. And basically what 
James Gamble and William Proctor were trying to do was say is that we are here for the service of our community, for our consumers. So we will grow the business by providing superior quality products and services that, are, that will do good for, the, for society, that provide great value, and will help for generations <coughs> to come. And I think that itself is purpose, right? It is about being able to give back, to make a positive, and contri a positive contribution to the world by the act of the business you're in. So I don't actually think there is a controversy or a conflict inherent in purpose versus profit, because when you serve by giving great quality, by ensuring the, you know, the, that the value you offer consumers is a fair and just value, you actually can improve life, you can touch life, which is PNG's mission statement. And we have seen that only when we do that are we rewarded with profit. So the two go hand in hand. They're kind of like the yin and the yang. And you can't have one without the other. Or if you do, it'll be short-lived. So, so I'll, come, I'll come to you, Cheryl and Kim. But therefore, if Proctor had to choose between short-term profit for this quarter's is results versus serving the community. Like UK is going through heat versus eat, right? Those tensions are real. We're all privileged people. We sit in a five-star hotel. We talk, pontificate about this. If Proctor had to choose between serving the community and letting go of short-term profit versus trying to do both, which one would be a choice and why? So, you know, as our CEO, John Moller, says, he has the principles of the economic world that he coaches us on quite often. You better be balanced. There is no such a thing as a long term if you mess up the short term and vice versa. So we have an expression in PNG, which is, are you burning the furniture? Which literally means, do you deliver the quarter by making crazy choices, which takes the office away for the next generation that comes after you? And if you do that, that's a hallmark of bad management. So we would not do that. We don't believe there's a choice. It's almost the question of is it profit or is it purpose is like asking who's your favorite child. There's no answer to that, right? There is none. And the, the hallmark of brilliant business leadership is how do you deliver both? Lovely. Thank you. And then and, and Cheryl, purpose versus profit. Is there a divide? Are we being too holier than thou when we say there is none? I'd love to know Grab and your own personal perspective on, on, on that. So I, <clears throat> I think to me the answer is it depends, right? So I think there are definitely parts of what we do every day that I feel are fully aligned. You know, so for example, um, if someone tells me, hey, you have to create livelihoods for your drivers, I think that's fully aligned. If someone says you have to provide insurance for them, fully aligned, we do that today. If someone tells me every single driver on your platform needs to change to an electric vehicle, it's questionable because 96% of all emission on our platform is actually from, from vehicles that belong to our driver and delivery partners. And for me to ask them, please change to an EV for the planet, I think it it's difficult, they can't afford it, right? So I think it, it depends. There definitely exists tension, uh, but I think what, and it, it sometimes is about timing. Will the world transition into electric vehicles? The answer for sure is yes. In fact, Singapore has very clear regulations as to when that will happen, when they will stop sell, selling IC vehicles. But I think it's a question of timing, it's a question of business. Um, so, yeah, I would say that's my answer. It, 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 it's, it, there is tension. It depends. Yeah. And yeah. Kim, I mean, Unilever has had, it's been one of the biggest proponents of the Unilever Living Sustainable Plan. It's also had its share of critiques uh, who took on Hellman's mayonnaise. And it, within the business and within your daily life, is there a tension between purpose and profit? I think you make a very good point on how do we first define purpose? I think the best purpose are when they are crafted to make a positive impact in consumers' lives and also the place where the brand can actually credibly play a role. So I think if you are able to link the functional and emotional utility of a brand in the service of the purpose, um, then I don't think there is a de-link of profit and uh, purpose at all. 
Um, so let, let me give you an example like, like Barbie. So let, let's not take a Unilever example, but let's say Barbie. Uh, with the purpose of um, you know, inspiring limitless sort of potential, especially in girls. Um, and you know, they created the dolls that come in different occupation. And I think that is a great integration of a product with a purpose. Uh, because through selling the dolls, they actually lend a very powerful message. And the more dolls they sell, the more profit they get. And the more profit they get, the more they can actually go and impact the world. So I think that you know, sort of virtuous cycle of link of business to sustainability or pro purpose, um, it becomes a very positive cycle for both uh, consumers and shareholders. So I don't see a de-link at all. And as we, thank you. As we look at the next 12 to 18 months, news sounds quite ominous, right? I mean, shipping costs have gone crazy. They're kind of normalizing now. Fuel costs, depending on if you're upstream or downstream in the business, has gone cuckoo, okay? Uh, UK is talking about heat or eat. Inflation is, I mean, we're, we're not yet officially in a recession, but we just could be. Do you think purpose will take a back seat because of all of this, because of pragmatism or any other reason? Or, or do you think it'll get a turbo boost because companies will say never waste a good crisis? And, 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 and what's, what's your view? And we'll start with you, Cheryl, at this time. So I think it's, it's so I think if, if your definition of purpose is why the company exists, right, then I think no, nothing will change. If your purpose, like for example for us, if the purpose is always to provide a safe ride and it's tied into our business, if the purpose is tied into creating economic empowerment, then actually nothing change, right? What you might shed off is the extra. You know, maybe I was thinking of doing um, hotel bookings on my app. Maybe that becomes what we, we don't prioritize. So I think if the purpose is fully aligned, then actually um, the current climate that we're in actually helps us sharpen that, makes us clearer on what we can do and can't. Um, Lovely. Kim, what, 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 what is Unilever and your own personal view across uh, on, on this issue? Will it take a front seat, back seat, or nothing will change? Um, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a very real question. Um, let me give you an example of uh, just last year when we were still in the middle of the pandemic and you know, inflation was already rising and we had to uh, take a hit on input cost. I think, uh, like what Cheryl said, there might be places that you know, we could, we probably need to uh, prioritize a bit of the profit, but in certain places where we play a critical role, like for example, when we um, sell our 10 rupee soap in India, and that's, for, that's equivalent to like 10 US cents. And that's really for you know, the under, underserved communities in India. And for these people to actually be able to afford to continue to buy a life boy for health prevention, um, it is one price pack that we can't afford to take up prices. Because we want to remain affordable to consumers. We want them to prevent uh, infections for their family. And that's where we'll take the hit. And I think uh, to your earlier question, um, Ruben, is that Short-term profit, I think when you have a real purpose in a brand, you should be always prepared to take short-term profit hits. But I think it definitely, what results have shown is that it definitely brings um, a positive impact to the business on the longer run. Lovely. Ms. I, I think that tension becomes real if you haven't defined your purpose clearly for the brand. And to be honest, I think it's in times of crisis that brands have a great opportunity to really double down and look into what am I here for? You know, what is the core of what I offer my consumers, the communities in which I serve? And to, again, pick up on something you said earlier, you know, a two-minute film probably isn't it. It is really about what is it that my brand does which makes a difference to people's lives. So I'll give you an example from something that happened to us as well um, right at the beginning of the pandemic. So I run a business called Safeguard. It's a brand that's pretty big in the Philippines. It's an antibacterial soap. Uh, very much like Life Boy, and when the pandemic started, for many of you in the in the audience, you'd know that Philippines is a country which had the world's one of the world's worst impacts and longest lockdowns. Uh -huh. Now, right at the beginning, there was a huge uh, immobilization of people across the country as quarantine sort of kicked in literally overnight, and people couldn't go from place A to B. 
many manufacturing sites, including ours, were, which are not directly in city centers, etc., were starved of operators, of staff. And we couldn't produce a very important basic commodity like a soap at the time when people needed it the most. And that was when our people sort of stepped up over and beyond the call of duty and said, you know what, we don't mind living at the plant. We will stay there and we will make sure that the lines run and we find a way to ship the product. And they did that. And what that did was, they, A, it gave us a great sense of pride of who we were, why we were there as an organization. It also ensured that supplies of critical safeguard actually went out in the business group. So I think if our purpose had been defined as making pretty films um, that win Khan Awards or things like that, about matters that we had either no right or tertiary rights to be speaking about, certainly there would be a choice. Yeah. But when your purpose is so clear, because your product and service is committed to it, it derives its right to exist because of it, a crisis will only make that sharper. Lovely. Lovely. For my personal beliefs and purpose, this is a great panel. Okay, completely biased, but who cares? So if you weren't working for a for-profit organization, and you were given one superpower to change the numbers I spoke about, you know, we can't afford to wait till 2073 to reach sustainable development goals, or 132 years to reach gender equality, or 90% of the world's plastic going into oceans, microplastics, we can carry on where the ocean takes most of the heat, which we still aren't facing yet. There's one superpower you had that you could wish for on change one of those, yeah? And this wasn't a question I discussed with them, so, so I'm being very honest. There's one superpower saying, put on a cape, here is what I want to change and why, what would that be? And I'm not going to pick one of you, because this wasn't something we discussed, so whichever of you want to start, what superpower would it be and why? I'm not sure I'm going to answer your question straight, but, um, but look, actually, you made a very good point at the start, at least for the brand that I work in. Um, purpose means profit, profit means more purpose, and you know, it's a virtuous, uh, virtuous cycle. So I really believe that even if there's a non-profit organization like an NGO, uh, they, don't, they don't make a loss-making sort of business model, right? They require funds and they invest the funds. So I don't find a better place to work where I can actually make a huge impact to consumers' lives while making profit at the same time. And that becomes, you know, the fundamental business model of doing good for the world. Uh, I think that's the best place to be. Okay. Cheryl, what superpower would you want and why? Um, I guess I will stop any climate changes. Just hold the temperature, at whatever, you know, I'll just, this is it. This is enough. No more. We're at 1.1 or 1.2 for now. 1.1. I'll just. Yeah. If I can bring it down, I would, but yeah, 1.1. That's it. Yeah. Priyali? Certainly living in Singapore, would be grateful for that superpower, <laughs> Cheryl. <laughs> more power to you. I think I'd go for the gender equality one. Yeah, so um, I, again, I said I'm a mother of a 14-year-old boy. I don't have a daughter, but I think the world would be a much better place if women had as much say in things that influence uh, our everyday lives, right? And 132 years is just way too long to wait. So my superpower would be, and my choice if I wasn't working here, would be actually on how do I get in? How do I get into education? How do I get into that, that level of society where you can influence and change the next generation? So it's not 132 years, but it's for when my son grows up. And as a way to end this honest panel, on behalf of all the men in the world, I apologize for the unequal world we've created and promise to do better. But thank you so much thank you. for being such a wonderful panel.